Hey guys, JP Dillon. Today we're going to look at something a little offbeat from what I work on. This is a Lloyd's uh, AMFM 8 track uh, stereo receiver. And it was part of a lot of electronics that I got. And you just love the dead moth in there, that's pretty cool. And let's turn this around and take a look and see what the model is. This is a model 8M36W-07A, printed in Japan, made in Japan. And this is strange, it has an auxiliary out rather than in. It's got your phono, it's got your speaker output, it's got your antenna connections, fairly simple. Now I know you're thinking to yourself, this is probably crap, why is he even bothering to mess with this? Well, the reason being is that I have the entire set. I have the matching speakers. I also have the matching record changer that goes with this that fits directly on top. It's the same form factor with and everything. And I figured, eh, it was all free. Why not? Let's play with it. Let's see what we can do with it. And this is of the age where if we look inside here, that 8-track head's got a lot of wear on it. But it does have a metal head bracket instead of the more common plastic ones that like to split and crack apart. Somebody used the piss out of this one. So yeah. But we're going to open it up and see if it's worth messing with or not. And yeah, But before we get inside of it, let's actually see what it does. Alright, so I've got this hooked up to some good known speakers. Let's see if it does anything. Rumble, rumble. Back Tuesday, Tony and a silent seeker from Cameroon. Oh, fine. The impossible due to the distance. Mmm, crusty tuner. Basketball slide. Shortwave? Wait, am I reading that right? This thing has a shortwave band on it. Doubt that it's going to work. Mmm, crackle, crackle. Okay, AM works. Trying to get that sweet spot to get the shortwave to work, but probably going to require that I take it apart and clean it. How weird that a machine would have a shortwave band on it. Alright, so let's take a peek inside here. And let's see how they trigger the A-track. I doubt that the A-track's going to run, but yeah, why not? All right, so we got our fantastic KC and the Sunshine test tape here. No sound, though. But I can hear. I thought I heard a motor spinning there for a second. It's switching tracks, at least. And apparently does that without the need for the, uh... there you go, head's moving. It's a good sign. Alright, so for the most part, basic functionality is uh, operational here. So I guess the next thing to do is take it apart and see what's inside. Alright, so here's the guts. And at first glance, this is actually pretty well manufactured. You've got a transformer here, and you've got your little cute power supply capacitor. There's your tuner section. It's actually got a three gain tuner, which is impressive. You've got a lot of trimmers, you've got a lot of IF cans, and they're using two SC460 IF amplifiers, which for the day was pretty schnazzy. 
you've got your stereo multiplex right there and then you've got your Mondo uh, preamp slash amplifier here and they've got a split uh, driver stage that fires into these output transistors here, these 2SB537s so this is like germanium central or excuse me, 2SB367 yeah this is germanium central, this is like mid to late 60's Japanese manufacturer and I'm impressed with the 8-track, they actually are using an inductive AC motor for the 8-track which spins freely, that's cool uh, let's see what else if we take a peek underneath here we see that the 8-track preamp is entirely confined here they've even got a motor run capacitor for that uh, little AC induction motor and overall the construction of this, although looks chaotic is really not that bad you could do a lot worse with something like a Morse Electrophonic and the fact that it's still working 40 plus years later, close to 50 years now in fact I would say more along the lines of 50 years uh, maybe even older, again mid 60's, that would place it over the 50 year mark so it's strange that they have an auxiliary out rather than an auxiliary in. I guess that would just be seen as a tape output since there's no other option on here. And I would assume that that's bilateral, so you could probably stick a, an auxiliary device in there and turn it to a blank spot and just run it that way. Or rewire it, whatever. So anyway, uh, I think what we're going to do realistically is clean all the pots and switches uh, it looks like they have some form of dial lamps that go back in there and yeah I could recap this thing and make it spiffy but that's just a huge time vampire as Shanko likes to say time vampires I'm more curious about the shortwave thing well anyway uh, yeah, you've got your lamps that come up here, you've got one that goes underneath there, you've got one that goes underneath there. Sorry for the crazy camera movements. And we still have to take this apart and clean the dead moth out and clean that stuff up. Uh, the 8-track capstan is thoroughly sticky if not seized, but that doesn't seem hard to get apart. Uh, there's your capstan bearing there. Trying to think of a way to get this up and out really easy. I can always just clean off the bearing and stick some uh, penetrating lube down in there. Depending on accessibility. Yeah, not great, but... Uh, okay. So, I'm going to clean the pots and switches and then we'll see if that improves things and brings our shortwave up I think it will alright so we've cleaned all the pots and switches I love that great uh, selectivity there Like the the one kilohertz tone you hear over top of Cindy Lauper is uh, my test generator. So I'm picking up 98.1, my 98.5 generator, and 98.9. So yeah, that sucks. And now my shortwave is operable now that I've cleaned that. I need a better antenna, but I can at least hear the oscillator running. So that's cool. Improvement, and it's a really amazing transition. I also clean the tuning condenser so we get a, a little bit better operation. Volume never fully attenuates. I'm impressed that this has actual bass and treble controls and a switchable loudness. 
That gains my respect. It actually sounds like that the multiplex is working, so that's kind of cool. I assume that the uh, phonos for a crystal cartridge, since there's no extra preamp in here. So really the next thing to do is to uh, hook it up to the signal generator and see if we can dial in the FM a little better because the FM is really <laughs> sloppy. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so hooking it up on the test bench here. I haven't really had the chance to clean off my previous work, so yeah, it's messy. Uh, here's our test generator at 98.5. And Okay, let's center that up and let's turn the output down. And now we start to see that other things are bleeding in. Let's maximize that. And get a little bit lower on signal and things bleed in. So I would say our detector is horribly misaligned. Okay. So which one of these is our detector? <laughs> uh, this over here is very likely our AM and this is our FM IF stage here so we can probably yeah adjusting those RF trimmers definitely affects the signal strength of the FM uh, okay and then if we just come down here, there we go. So this, these two things here are probably our detectors since they have the greatest influence here. And we're going to try to maximize sensitivity. We can see we're getting the bleed through from the other station there. Not great. And uh, tweaking those IF cans doesn't do a whole lot either. That's a little improvement. There's our IF transformers there. Wow, that was a difference. Alright, so it's not going to win any awards for selectivity, that's for sure. No siree. I'm just trying to dial this in best possible. This is our AM section over here. I'm not going to mess with that. That's our oscillator adjustment. Alright. That's also AMIF. All right, so basically what it comes down to is, is this is our FM, our F stages here. This is the IF transformer. These are our IF stages, and this is our detector coil. And I can get it pretty close, but as you can see, yeah, 150 microvolts before the other stations bleed in. The selectivity on this sucks. Now, I could get really tricky and I could disconnect the IF transformer and inject our 10.7 megahertz here, but yeah, I think what I'm going to try to do first is, is we're going to take our scope probe and we're going to take a look at various IF stages and I'm going to see, let's get a clip lead. Let's take a look at the left channel here, which is the output, and if I increase our RF, there we go, okay. Let's just peek all this out. 
and we're going to take a look at our that's our 10.7 right there going up and down as I increase this and decrease the signal generator so what I'm going to do is I'm going to peak the tuner so that we get the most of that Okay, go to our IF transformers here, peek those out. It's a little bit better. Okay, so that's before the that's the first stage there. So now we come to the second stage and we tune the let's see here. Maybe I should find a different lead here because that one's not, oh, it's not even connected. Okay. Yeah, this one's going to be a pain. Let's just sink that right into the hole there. It'll stay there. No? Yes? No? Alright, so there's our second stage. It's about 10 times amplification. And let's peek that out. Yes. Okay. Let's go to our final stage. And that's over here. Push some of the stuff out of the way. Alright, there's our final stage. And it's going to come loose on me. Stay there, damn it. These boards are so densely packed. It's almost impossible to keep the test probe there. Well, anyway, let me just peek the final stage. Alright, so I got all the stages peeked out. And let's turn up our modulation here. And let's turn down this. And now let's tune. Ugh. Now what we want to try to do is let's get the most sensitivity out of it. So I lower the I'm lowering the output of the generator and I'm trying to adjust the detector for the best selectivity between the two channels. I'm still not going to get much further than that. Yeah, about 150 microvolts before the other channel bleeds through. That just is what it is. It's crappy tuner. Okay, so now let's see if our multiplex actually works. Let's switch over to stereo. Let's turn our pilot signal up here. And as we can see, if I switch between right and left, we have the just little tiny bit of separation. So, looking at the multiplex, this is probably our separation. Uh, here's our 19 kilohertz amplifier here, I'm guessing. So let's peek this out, 19 kilohertz pilot. That increases separation there, as we can see. This is, given the age, probably the 67K reject. Nope, that's actually a fine tune there. Let's peek that out. And then let's adjust our 38K and our low pass and then our separation adjustment. And for this we'll turn up the gain on the left channel, turn up the signal quality, and we're going to try to phase out that uh, best we can there. Do do do. Yeah, I'm thinking that's as good as it gets. You want to null that as best possible. So that's not bad. Now we've got better separation. Uh, and the reason why it's unequal is because my scope's set that way. There you go. So we got right and we got left. 
and we can tweak this just a little bit more tweaky tweaky really helps to have the alignment generator it really does it makes it just so much faster so that's not bad so as long as you have a good fat signal this will be an okay sounding tuner I'm just not at all not at all impressed with the way that it's uh, performing yeah anyway I wonder if there's a way to tweak that but now on to bigger and better things like the A-Track okay so before we jump into the A-Track I am actually connecting my audio generator to the aux out and just have it blank on uh, the tape input with no tape attached and if you're curious that's our maximum output and let's see if we can make sure that these are both channel matched there we go okie dokie so that's our uh, maximum output right there you can see it start to clip there let's see what that is on a meter all right, so measuring the AC voltage. That's uh, 5.1 volts continuous AC. So if we square that, let's just round down and call it 25, divided by eight, that's about three and a half watts per channel. Nothing stellar. But with the super efficient speakers that this goes along with which you'll see later in the series it's probably enough to fill a small room with sound so on the next episode we're gonna get to work in the A track clean off all this belt goo oil things up make sure that it it works halfway decent and I don't know why the camera's freaking out but sure so we'll get going on that in the next episode so stay tuned more stuff to come